Here are 30 online reviews of the audiobook titled, Your Money or Your Life. Written by Vicky Robin, Joe Dominguez, Mr. Money Mustache. Narrated by Vicky Robin. 1. Only useful to the utterly clueless. I was hoping to hear tips about how Vicky Robin made it through decades of market ups and downs after early retirement. Instead, I got a look chiding lecture about my terrible materialism and how dumb I must be about my life and my money. The author addresses all criticism directly at the reader as though we're all white picket fencers with two enormous homes and an out-of-control shopping habit. I'm a self-employed single person planning to retire in my mid-40s, so basic financial management is not new to me. I would like to hear about how she managed decades of changing markets without income, but this book was totally useless in that regard. If you feel that your spending is out of control and this is your first book on personal finance, it might be worth reading. 2. More spiritual than financial. Not what I was expecting at all. This book contains very little real financial advice. It's mostly spiritual self-improvement kind of stuff. Rich Dad Poor Dad is 100x better and if you want something to that's short and gets down to the nitty gritty that is short and solid advice, try Total Money Makeover. 1 tenth I would not recommend this book. 3. A new money headspace. If you want a completely different look at money work and how we meaningful changes, stick with this book. A significant portion of the book is focused on social and environmental issues and values. I could see people having trouble with this part, but I feel the solutions proposed are practical and refreshingly individualized. In fact the steps in themselves are easy and straightforward. The true value is how many ways they can be applied. 4. This book was kinda so-so. More on the boring side. This book sounds like they are just repeating themselves. They are saying nothing anyone doesn't know already. So it was kinda like a waste of my time and money honestly. She did give very 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 few insight. 5 to 10% insight, 90 to 95% fluff. Would I recommend this book to others? But I enjoyed her voice, she sounds like a cute elderly lady lol. And the stories of others are pretty good also. The answer to that question is no, sad to say. 5. This is the updated version of the original Fire book. Financially independent, retire early. I have listened to this book several times, to get me back to practical techniques on saving for my crossover point. The crossover point is the most compelling reason to listen to this book, where your investment income graph meets your expense graph line. You can save more or spend less, to get there quicker but you better do both if you want to become fi while you are still young enough to enjoy it. 6. Amazing as audio. High respect for the authors. Fantastic resource and really well narrated by the author. I expect this to be as life-changing, if not more so, as the life-changing magic of tidying up. Now that I've read through it once, I'm going to read it again and follow the steps. I love that it gives me a very specific system of steps to follow, and that they are simple and easy to follow. Really excited to go through the process. I also feel a lot of respect for the authors, as they clearly value their readers and the world and using money to value life and to create a better world for everyone. 7. Life Changing As soon as I finished this book, I started listening again. This has been a life-changing book for me. Vicky's wisdom and advice helped me to gain control over my finances and to plan for a brighter future. The information is really practical with step-by-step -step actions to gain greater insight of where your money is going, so that you can then follow more steps to make sure you are managing it wisely. I highly recommend this book and can see why it is consistently a bestseller. 8. Boring and too repetitive. The narration is good, but that's about the only positive thing I can say about this book. It's so repetitive that it gets annoying. In one chapter, she must have said no blame, no shame at least 20 times. It's good to reinforce certain concepts, but this is too much. Most of the items discussed in this book are plain common sense. So many examples that are just filler material that could have been left out. Returning book. 9. Some gold nuggets but tons of boring fillers. Pros. Some real gold nuggets in the first half of the book. The true amount you are earning from work factoring in recovery expense, transport, and clothes is pure gold. Some good tactical information early on as well. Cons. Tons of fillers and boring ass stories. The audiobook could have been easily condensed to one fourth its size. I was so mad that the author won't get straight to the point. It's boring story after another with respective boring chapter summaries. The second half of the audiobook was useless, I learned nothing from it. 
I'd recommend the first half of the audiobook but the second half you can easily skip and you won't miss anything. 10. Transforming my relationship with books. This book felt eye-opening to me. I've always been pretty loose with my money, spending it somewhat freely throughout my life. Your money or your life changed everything. I was most heavily impacted by how the book wasn't focusing on creating an empire, becoming a millionaire, or making the maximum amount that you can. It was about making enough and goes into what enough is. The book's goal is to make you a happier human being. Freeing the weight of finances off your shoulders as much as it can. Thank you Vicky Robin for writing this. 11. A Plate of Platitudes and Virtue Signaling I read many books on financial planning and have been in the financial planning profession for 15 years. I found this book difficult to finish. Vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. Even the author's virtue is signaling about off-topics such as global warming and systemic racism. 12. Worth the read. It's a financial self-help book. I've read plenty, in some ways, it feels like all the rest. This one is good about helping you not just understand what you should do, budgeting, live below means, save for retirement, but it's also good at getting you to see why, and helping you prioritize along the way. It spend a little too long and tries a little too hard to convince you that you want to be financially independent, day, and uses a lot of examples of people that have lives that very much don't match my own. That said, written, and recorded well, solid information. I don't regret listening to, but didn't read much of anything new to me. 13. For people who have never thought about their finances. This book seems targeted toward people who haven't thought about their finances at all. If you have been exposed to the fire, financial independence retire early, community, investment, or thought about keeping a budget, this book is probably not for you. I think it's more for people who don't even think it's a good idea to think about their finances, and then it argues that they should. 14. Depressing Extremist Views I guess I didn't realize this was a book where the first many 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 chapters is just a depressing tone where she tells us everything sucks. Jobs suck, owning things suck, having goals suck, working sucks, America sucks, etc. I can't imagine she will redeem herself in the last half. I'm returning, cause this philosophy isn't for me. 15. Inspired. I have listened to countless podcasts and books on finance. This book is a great guide for becoming aware of what we have been programmed to feel about money and how we can go about shifting our perspective. In this consumer-driven society it's a personal responsibility for each money earner to be able to steward their money in the way that best suits their values. I have been jotting down notes on how I can start to be more mindful about my spending and investing. Thank you Joe and Vicky for putting together such a great timeless resource. 16. This is the updated version. If I was listening to this book 100 hundred years from now I might appreciate its telling of what it's like to struggle to be middle class in the 21st century. Otherwise the author tells you what you already know about America. Probably because the author has been retired on an island for so long this is actually news to them. If you can find the original version of this audiobook get it, or at least skip the first three audiobook chapters of this book, and go to audiobook chapter 4 or book chapter 1. 17. Some good tips but. This book is not as captivating as other finance books. I found myself losing focus at the numerous lists being read out loud. After a few minutes of listening it turns into white noise. It feels like it's being read as a filibuster. Ensure some people will enjoy the minute tips mentioned here, but I found myself craving more. If you already have somewhat of a grab of finance, I believe this book is not for you. However, if you're just getting into the realm of money and learning what to do with it, you may find some of the tips beneficial, albeit there being better books out there for beginners. 18. Empowering narrative regarding money and finances. I like to hear another's way of looking at money and finances. This did not disappoint. Along with psychological and philosophical ideas, the author also employs practical step-by-step -step instructions to identifying slash clarifying your own values regarding money and finances. This book really made me think differently about the value of money. Narration was good and held my attention. 19. No right answers? Overall I really enjoyed this book and I think there are some sound concepts and ideas that could be quite useful. My only real pet peeve was that at the end of every chapter the author asks a series of questions and then finishes up by saying there are no right answers. I think she really intends to say there are no wrong answers, but it's quite confusing. Why would I even attempt to answer a question if I know ahead of time that there are no right answers? 20. A good starter book for fire movement. 
It's a good starter book for people who wants to start the financial independence. A good book about saving, for people who's not keep an eye on their spending or not aware of their spending habits to start think about it. This book provides a good concept about that money is equal to your life energy, if you value your time and life you should value more on your money slash spending. She kind of talked about the saving part too long and repeating, feel like a nagging mom sometimes, trying to be passive aggressively making you start some saving. Agree with some reviews here, this book could have been shorter and still useful at the same time. Overall, I would still say it's worth to listen slash read. The author talked about some concepts on how to generate more income through investment but lack of useful tips. For more concrete income generate methods I would recommend the book Work Optional by Tanya Hester. 21. It's like listening to your nagging mother-in-law. I think there's some good advice somewhere in the inflated content. However, the lesson is buried under a mountain of useless life anecdotes that go on and on. Just blah blah blah. Worse, the woman who narrates sounds like a condescending nag that would not stop. After several hours of listening to the book, trying to find a money lesson somewhere, I just couldn't take it anymore. I either have to shoot myself or just stop listening to this book. I chose self-preservation. 22. Great Mindset Changer. This is a fantastic book if you are looking to redefine your relationship with and become more mindful about money in your life. Though a few of the earlier chapters dragged a bit for me, I found that, by the end, the book had profoundly changed the way I viewed money and had given me some useful tools for defining the purpose of and learning to keep better track of my income. I found it useful enough that I went and bought the Kindle version also since I absorb information differently via audio versus print. 23. Possibly the single worst book I have ever read. I do not usually review books unless they are exceptional, but this book was exceptionally bad. Oh my gosh if the lady preaches at me one more time about some liberal save the planet nonsense, I think I will wretch. Leave your political opinions out of personal finance slash business related books. And please 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 stop talking to your audience like they are either stupid, or stop learning at 5 years old. I am dumbfounded by how many folks, even some I respect, have recommended this book. It is truly truly awful. Oh and I love the kicker on this book. The key to monetary success is just to quit wanting so much money and learn to live on less. Yeah, um, no thanks. 24. It does exactly what it promises. No more no less. This book is intended for the novice, the clueless person who is struggling with money and finances and offers a new outlook on things along with suggestions on solutions. It read as an introductory book to FI living. The rest is up to you. If you already know about FI or are already aware of it then the book's content may just be a different person's presentation of it, but perhaps nothing new to you. It's meant for a beginner, and it does it well. This was something that I had already heard, read, or practiced on my own so in my case this was nothing compelling or new, even what I did necessarily agreed with, however I would recommend this to someone just stating out, a high school student, or someone looking for guidance on an alternative for financial independence. Everyone's case is different don't take what it says here to heart. Listen and make up your own opinion on the subject. 25. So your parents taught you nothing? I struggled to finish this. Debt is bad, don't overspend your income, no day. I do not see how this book is a revelation to people based on the simple concepts. But living in a trailer or a hippie commune is absurd. Most examples are Dick and Jane are drowning in debt, and I told them to stop buying junk. This is just common sense. Save your money by not buying this book and put it in a CD or an ETF. 26. Life Changing. I enjoyed this book so much, it's the first audiobook that I've finished from the beginning till the very end. And I'm planning to listen to it again, to get the specifics on working out the real hourly wage, etc. This is also my first review, and I'm doing it because I hope you'll get an oil for your own life changing experience, or as the author liked to put it, your relationship with money. The anecdotes presented are so applicable, because as I'm listening, I'd nod and agree, that's just like me. On multiple occasions, I can definitely relate to the stories and that makes me wanting to try out all the steps because if other people can do it, why can't I? Most important takeaway for me, is it really worth X hours of my life working just to satisfy my impulsive shopping habit? 27. Okay for a beginner audience. I enjoyed the narrator. The author did make some enlightening thoughts in the first couple chapters about money's draw on life. The nine-step plan was written for someone who's never owned a savings account. It didn't speak to me as an intermediate saver or investor. 28. 
what is your life worth? Some of the recommendations, like tracking every cent I've made, in this book would be far too tedious for me to complete. Still, the concept of thinking of money as life energy is an interesting concept, and the offered steps serve as a financial independence 101. 29. Preachy hippie woman talks about money and life. I bought this book because it was recommended by literally dozens of people in the fire movement and in the minimalist movement. How could so many people be so wrong? The book begins with a diatribe of progressive liberal talk about saving the planet and the evils of consumerism. Like a furious storm the tirade eventually relents to a gentle hippie rain as we get into the heart of the book and its ideas. At the core of the book is the idea that you trade your life energy for money and most of us have devalued our life energy to the point that we are essentially making bad trades. The cure for our malady is meticulous budgeting, recording expenses to the penny, charting income, and expenses. 30. Great new resource for millennials. As a millennial anxious to finish my PhD, but uninterested in working 8 to 5 for the next 20 to 30 years, this book provided a holistic view of money, time, life energy, and the quality of living. This isn't a finance book it's a life, energy, and money management tool. Lots of info about the why for you to consider as you create your plan using these steps. Thank you for watching. Please, do not forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Tune in for more online audiobooks reviews.